What's up, everybody? It's April Dawn. I'm here to do my Queen Sugar Season 2, Episode 1 and 2 review. So, I'm not going to waste too much time. I want to go ahead and get through it because it's going to be a long video. But last night, I did uh, watch it live. I came in a little bit late because I was trying to watch on my Mac. And, but you got to download it and code it. That's a lot of drama. So, I didn't have time for all this. So, I got on the phone. I did it. And thank you for the people who watched with me. They took my video down because they said I had copyrighted material on it. I think I flipped the camera around maybe once or twice. So, we're going to try it again next week, okay? So, um, now I know what not to do. So, let's go ahead and get started. Now, if you notice, season one and season two started out the same way, guys, with Nova. We always thought we started out with Nova. So, Nova was in the yard and she's hanging some scarves. Or she's taking some scarves off the... Um, the clothesline, and she's wrapping them up. We don't, we'll don't. we find out who she's wrapping them up for later. And then out comes a random white man. We turn. We think it's white skin. We think we're going to see Calvin, right? No, nah, we ain't see Calvin. We seen another white man coming out the house. And, you know, he was like, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Can we, like, get your number? Can I get together again? And she was like, nah, you good. You know what I'm saying? Go on about your business. So, I mean, she out here dismissing people. You know, she's just out here living life. I don't know if it's like I'm grown and I'm going to do it because I want to do it. Or it's like I'm depressed and I just find me another white boy replacement for Calvin. I don't know. But now we're going to um, Charlie. Charlie is in a meeting. Her and Remy are meeting with some um, investors about a loan for the sugar meal. She's presenting her plan. She's looking fabulous. Everything's looking great. But they, she tells, they tell her that they're down for the loan. They will give them the loan, but they want Davis to sign off of it because his brand is what they're attracted to. I know she pissed because in my mind, I'm thinking, didn't she build Davis brand? So, like, I'm Bill Davis brand, and now I'm, I'm going to build this brand. She, I really don't need him to do anything, but it's like she can't do anything without this man. She can't move forward on in her life. And you can see this is starting to get frustrating for Charlie. So, they leave the meeting, and... um. Remy tells her, man, I'm sorry, you know, that happened to you, you know, I know, I know you felt blindsided, and she says, um, yeah, you know, we'll make it work, or whatever the case may be, and then he tells her, well, you know, listen, I mean, maybe we should just be friends until you can be out with somebody in public, you know, without any problems, so obviously this has upset her, so now we're out here, hold up, yeah, so Vi and Prosper, they're talking at the diner. They're talking about uh, Vi is now have some halfway house ladies that's working it for her in the kitchen. So I think that's dope that you have the halfway house. I know at Camille Grill in New Orleans, they have a lot of people from jail or halfway house, ex, you know, ex-cons that work there or whatever. And they give them a chance because everybody deserves a second chance, right? And they're getting ready for Juneteenth. If you don't know what Juneteenth is, y'all Google it. Juneteenth is a holiday that they celebrate in Texas and some southern states. Okay, where they, um, where General somebody came to Galveston two years after the Emancipation Proclamation and made them, um, free, free the slaves because, you know, it, it had, the slaves were already free, but people were ignoring the laws or, like, avoiding, you know, you know, telling their slaves because they told us, the people, the masses to tell the slaves, so, you know, they weren't going to tell no slaves. So, you know, that's when we was officially free. That's, like, our 4th of July, and I really feel like it should be a national holiday that all black people should celebrate instead of 4th of July, but, you know, I digress. So, they're getting ready for Juneteenth. So, we have Dollar Ralph, Angel, and Blue. They're at the farm. They're driving around on a tractor. They hop off the tractor. He points out a little plot of land. Um, This is the pot where he's going to plant the soybeans, but he said that for Blue... This is going to be called Blue's Corner. Whenever Blue wants to go and think and get away from everybody and kind of like be alone, this is his area. It's all for him. So it was really cute. That was super cute. Okay. They try to make us like darling because you know I was side-eyed her for like the whole first season. Okay. But I can see how they trying to work it on us, you know. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go with y'all. I'm going to go with y'all on Darla. So Blue got his little, you know, he ran out into the field. They hugged him, you know. She asked him had he talked to his sisters yet. He said no, he has not talked to him because he knows as soon as he tell him about the land, they're going to try to take it away from him. She says, you don't know that. And he said, you know, let's just enjoy the moment. So they hug and they have a little moment and it's real cute. So now we're with Kiki and Micah. They're riding down the highway in his new car that his dad has bought him for his birthday. I think he's making 16 if I'm not mistaken. But um, he has his brand new car and the girl is like, you know, he takes them out. So, I mean, Kiki and his and the mom and Charlie, they take him out to lunch. And, you know, he tells them that this is, you know, the nicest thing anybody's ever done for me for my birthday. And they're like, your dad bought you, like, this fabulous car. What do you mean? And he's like, he's just doing that because, you know, he feels guilty and he's trying to buy my forgiveness or whatever. I'm going to take the car. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm not stupid. And Charlie says, just don't let your daddy issues, you know, spoil your day today. And he says, okay. And, you know, they kind of, 
And they talk about painting and whatnot. It was real cute. It was real cute. So, um, Vi is cooking. She's trying to get in contact with Hollywood. She goes and she sees that Hollywood has changed his Facebook picture or whatever. And she look a little hurt. So, she's trying to call him and he's not answering the phone. So, instead of calling him, she calls Nova. And Nova answers the phone and she says, basically, they going out tonight. Or Nova call her, whatever. But they going out tonight. When Mike go out for his birthday, you know, they going out tonight to celebrate. And, you know, Vi, like, you just looking for a man. You just want to go on a man hunt. She like, girl, whatever. You you about that life or whatever. You about that action, whatever. Girl, it's popping tonight. It's ladies' night. Hey, and I'm feeling right. Oh, this is ladies' night. Oh, what a night. Yeah, so they going out for ladies' night, okay? So, boom. Ladies' night. Okay, so but then she gets off the phone. Nova is at a baby shower for one of her friends. This is what she's giving the scarves to that we saw at the beginning. So her and the lady sit down and talk, and they talk about, you know, marriage and being, you know, in your 30s, basically, and not being married. Y'all, I'm 36 years old, so I could really relate to the conversation that they were having about, you know... Uh, I didn't think I would be this old and not married. I never sat around and thought about marriage. Um, I'm not the type of girl who picks out, you know, her wedding dress and all that type of stuff. I just kind of thought it would happen. You know, I just thought people fall in love and they get married. But now that I'm a certain age, I'm like, why? I haven't, I haven't, you know, it hasn't, it hasn't happened. And, you know, I don't have any kids either. So, you know, I want to have, you know, my clock is ticking. I realize that it's a time limit for me to have children. So, you know, the falling in love part, I wish it would happen. Okay. <laughs> Because I want to have a baby, but I'm also not going to force it to happen. And so Nova was basically like, you know, I'm, I'm speaking, that was for me personally, but this is some of the same sentiments the women at the table were giving. And Nova was just like, basically, you know, you maybe you should step outside of your comfort zone and try to meet different people. You know, like maybe you should date women. Maybe you should date men who are not black. Maybe you should date, you know, and I have dated men who are not black, just FYI. Um, they wasn't that great either. They was all right. Okay, I'm just letting y'all know. I've dated international black men. I've dated bl men who are not black, okay? And um, it's still hard out here for everybody. But she just saying expand your horizons. And her friend, like, girlfriend, hold up. You know, I ain't finna jump in the lady pond. We know you like to dip and swim with the fishes, honey. But I ain't finna to be eating no tuna. I ain't about that life. I don't want okra, okay? So <laughs> I don't want to eat okra. I'm just saying. I don't want that. Um... So that was a cute little conversation. You know, Ava DuVernay, she throw those in for us. You know, you throw those in. So now we're with Prosper and Ralph Angel. They're at the farm. The tractor is broken down. Ralph Angel is, you know, he's saying that he, he wants to get the tractor fixed. Does he know anybody who can get the tractor fixed? Because he wants to put the soybean in because he don't want to miss the harvest. And so, um, and Prosper just expresses how proud he is of him and how, you know, he's thinking like a real farmer and, you know, he's doing things to really be proud of. And you can tell that Ralph Angel really, like, Got a sense of accomplishment from that. And I like, felt, you know, good about what he was saying. Like, they need to affirm him more often. I mean, I agree with Aim Vibe, but that comes a little bit later. So, um, they go to the club. So, we at the club. Oh, let me stop. No, Hollywood calls Ralph Angel while he's in the middle of talking to Prosper. Basically, Ralph, Ralph Angel is like, you know, look, I know you want to talk about Vi. You asked me about this, that, and the other, but I know you want to talk to Vi. You need to go ahead and call her and stop playing because I'm not going to get in the middle of this. And Hollywood like, all right, you know what I'm saying? I missed her call. I just wanted to know if everything was okay. So, um, we are at the club. We at the club. Hey, we all up in the club. Hey, Vi got her. Stop. Ain't T, Vi? Ain't T. You got that crap top on, girl. Where you got that from, Agassi? Where you got that from? Forever 21? She got that from Agassi. That's what she got it from, y'all. She got it from Fashion Nova. Okay? She got her Fashion Nova crop top outfit on in the club, tanned it up, getting it. I wouldn't even wear that, girl. But go on, a vibe. Do you, boo? Okay, so they out there in the club. They having fun. You know, Nova enough caught her a piece of fresh meat. You know, everybody dancing, having a good time. And then we turn around and we see that Charlie sees Davis in the club with a thought. Okay? No, he did this. So... She comes over there and he like, what's up? You know, what's good? I mean, I, can, I don't expect Davis to be any different because number one, he a fuck boy. Excuse my language. But number two, he is, um, 
I mean, he not married to her no more. They're not together no more. So there's no need for him to hide the fact that he's a douchebag, okay? So basically, she's like, I'm upset that you up in here and you're not with your son on your birthday, on his birthday, you know what I'm saying? And uh, the fact or the fact that you want her, I don't know what I'm more upset about. And he like, well, Michael told me he didn't want to be with me on his birthday. He wanted to be with his girlfriend. That's why I'm here. And don't worry about it because I got the club on lock. Ain't nobody taking no pictures or nothing. Don't worry about it. So, you know, all this time, I, I know Charlie felt played because all this time she had not been hanging out with Remy or kissing him or holding his hand or nothing like that because she didn't want to mess up the brand but look at this thing out here with this little thought in the club not even worried about you that go to show you ladies why you worry about the image and, and all of this he ain't worried about your image he is not worried about your image girl but he is out there doing what he want to do okay so uh yeah he said go okay so Vi and Nova come over there they over there turning up you know Auntie Vi she going through honey Auntie Vi is going through it so she is hollering and screaming and going off talking about something. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. All the stuff she did for y'all. She helped you and she protected you. So, you know, they had the um, police drag them out of there or whatever. So um, when they get back to the house, uh, Nova and Charlie talk. And she basically says that, you know, they used to talk all the time. And, you know, um, she felt so safe in his arms. And to see his arms wrapped around that girl. So you, we can see, see that, that Charlie is not as strong as she let out to be. She needs to mourn her marriage. She needs to mourn the fact that she did have a husband in a relationship. And she did love this man, this horrible man. It might be hard for her because he was, you know, participated in the whole rape thing. But, like... I know at some point you loved him enough to marry him, have his baby or whatever. And so she needs to mourn, mourn that relationship. So, um, okay. Charlie tells Nova, yeah, she was jealous. She was a little bit jealous of what happened. So, and she's basically like, why we can't get it right? You know, why, you know, Hollywood and Vi and, you know, why we can't just get our stuff together. So Darla is at the meeting. She's talking about, um, she tells a story and I can't remember what the story was, but she, oh, about a shirt she used to wear all the time and how she got a stain on the shirt. That's the, basically what she's talking about the relationship or whatever, because she's living in the house with Ralph Angel and Blue and it's cute or whatever, but like, she, basically she's saying that, let me tell you something, a man will uh, take you to meet his mama, he will take you out, he will have you all over the place with him, all over doing everything with him, claiming you everything, but... So let y'all get in an argument and that man haven't said we're together or you're my wife or you don't have no paperwork, you know, y'all, but you, he will let you know you ain't his wife, you ain't his girlfriend, you ain't this, you ain't that, and you can get out, okay? So, it, you know, basically she's afraid that if one thing happens or something bad happens, that, you know, she, everything is going to fall apart and she's going to end up using again. So, she's trying to, you know, go back to the class to kind of get herself back together and stay on track, okay? So... Hold up. Hold up. I got lots of notes. Okay, so uh, I don't know when this happens, but I'm going to go ahead and say it now. Charlie and Nova and Vi, they all talk about what's going on with the tractor. And so um, basically, uh, Ralph Angel got a deal on a man to fix the tractor because he did some of the work himself. So they saved him like $5,000. But Charlie basically cussed him off and says, you know, well, I just want to let you know we need to get a new tractor because we could have wrote off the depreciation. And, you know, we could have gotten, um, oh, this is starting to get on my nerves. We could have wrote off the depreciation and we'll save more money in the long run. And so, um, obviously, Ralph Angel gets very upset. Um, Vi says, we need to affirm him sometimes. You stop trying to keep him under your thumb. And they need to. Why do they talk to him so bad? It's like, Charlie, Charlie need to get some. I mean, we talked about that the other night on Facebook. Um, shout out to mj franklin okay so we she needs some for real she needs to get some all right and we talked about that last night too on the live chat so um michael gets pulled over okay they're at this time they're getting ready for the juneteenth dinner that they're about to eat so you know oh that rack of lamb looks oh that rack of lamb looks so good my god it looks so good um they're putting the food on the table they're saying grace and they notice that michael is still not there so the phone is ringing the whole time charlie is calling i mean davis is calling charlie trying to figure out what's going on. Um, uh, he says that Michael left his house hours ago. So Charlie calls Kiki. Kiki says he's not there. So obviously everybody's starting to get worried. So they, they get a ping on the cell phone. They go out. The car is still out there because the cell phone is still in the car. Nova gets a call and says that Micah is downtown. So they go downtown to get Micah. Charlie is pissed. She comes in there. I want to get my child. Where is he? They, they look up his name. He's not in the system. Anybody who ever been to jail before knows that they put you in the holding cell and then they, and they'll pull you out and book you into the system. That's when you take your pictures and all of that stuff. And then they put you in the jail jail. That's when you in the system. Okay. That take like a while. So 
if he had just got there, you know, it would have took him an hour or so to get put into the system. So, um, you know, they kept telling her that he was in the system and she's getting more and more frustrated. Now, I understand she's upset, but at the same time, you're not going to get nothing done just running up in there hollering and screaming at people. That's not, that's not how life is going to work. So, um, Davis shows up. Davis, you know, calmly asked the police officer. Obviously, they're starstruck. And they did ask him for a selfie. And people was like, I, I watched another review and the girl was just like, I couldn't stand when he gave the selfie. Like, I couldn't stand it either. But at the same time, I know when he was arguing with her and he said, I know I did a song and dance, but it was my song and dance. You know, so... I understood why he did it because we're in the South and you trying to get your son out. So whatever these little stupid white people want or this dude right here wants so he would let you out because they wasn't all white. It was a black police officer too. Um, Just do it so we can take the picture and we can worry about Black Lives Matter later. Okay, we're trying to get this black life out of this jail. So I understood what his point was, and I under, and I understood him when he was yelling at Charlie like, "You just mad because you're not controlling everything." Because part of that was she's up, she's so upset. She knows she need his signature for this paper. She knows she's not gonna get it, okay? And she's very upset because she feel like he had to shuck and jive to get them, you know, to get their son out of jail or whatever. So, but while all this is going on, Ralph Angel, I mean, uh, Micah, Paul, baby, he. Just got out of jail. The boy was crying when they bought him in. He was feeling bad. Like, why don't y'all take a moment to stop arguing with each other and hug your child? So Nova was the only person who thought to com to comfort him. So she comforted him, gave him a hug. She noticed that the boy peed on himself. Lord Jesus Christ, he peed on himself. He was so scared, poor thing. Like, I, she said, it's nothing to be ashamed of, baby. And it isn't. It isn't. If you're not about that life, like, I'm going to tell y'all my business. I got arrested one time for a ticket. Okay, as soon as I got to the jail, the girl, say, the girl sitting next to me said, girl, you don't belong in here. I said, no, I don't. I absolutely do not belong in here, ma'am. You are correct. Because I don't belong in jail. Now, I ain't cry. But I'm just saying because I'm a G. You know what I mean? I ain't crying. <laughs> but I can understand somebody break down and cry. Hell, you ain't about that life. I'm not from the hood. I'm from the country slash suburbs. Okay, I'm not from the hood. I don't be know about no jail. So, Paul Michael, he was all upset. Nova comforted him. I don't even think Charlie or Davis gave him a hug, you know. But, um... And that was that. You can tell that Micah's going to have some type of issue. It's going to be an issue this this season with him. So, Vi calls Hollywood again. Hollywood says that, um, you know, he answers the phone. And they just start talking to each other or whatever. So, she lay down and they say they just touch I was like, bye, Hollywood. Bye. And Hollywood, yay. Okay, anyway. So, um... Darla, Darla is at the, she comes over, she brings her food, I listen, Darla, old crackhead, like, can Darla cook, can Darla cook, I don't know if I want to eat Darla food, but anyway, Darla came to the house, she came, um, and later on, after all the confusion, she's talking to Ralph Angel outside, and she basically tells him that I'm going home tonight, and he's like, what's going on, what's up, now, I did feel like he was being, uh, a little bit insensitive to her situation, because he was, like, sitting around talking to drug dealers, I mean, drug, ex-drug addicts about being on drugs, like, I don't see how that's helping, and she's trying to explain to him, you know, when you went to jail, because he makes the comparison to him, and she says, well, you went to jail, that's for something you did, but this is for something I am, you know, she's gonna be a drug addict forever, you know how alcoholics be like, I'm an alcoholic, like, I'll be an alcoholic forever i'm never gonna get over it and i'm never gonna do it again that's not how stuff happens and you know I, we have to be two whole people before we can get together i was like daughter you better you better self-reflect and grow as a person all right all right i might mess with you darla okay so rap angel he wasn't with it at first but he was just like you not alone or whatever but i just hope it don't become a thing where like he's like you don't need to go up there you have me you have us we have it together because y'all had each other the first time man stop it from getting on dope rap and let the girl go to class and do whatever she needs to do to stay off that crack okay we don't need her be holding for, for crack no more no god so that was their little conversation um, and I want to say that's it. So at the end of the episode, oh no, I'm lying. He in the holding cell. Yeah, I went all that. She said she going home. Okay, Charlie tries to talk to Michael when they get back, but he says he don't want to talk. You know, he don't want to talk to her. So, um, at the end of the episode, there the paperwork that's needed for the loan. Charlie signs Davis's name on that loan paperwork. Jesus. So. That was the end of episode one. Excellent episode. Great way to start off the new season. I mean, fantastic. This this thing is going to come to bite Charlie back in the butt times 10. Um, So, especially after episode two. I'm sorry, y'all. It's a fly flying around here. Ooh, Lord, it's getting on my nerves. A little nap. All right, so...
Episode two, we have Darla at work. Ralph Angel and Blue come by with coffee and donuts, and Ralph Angel asks her out on a proper date. It's real cute and everything. It's real cute. So Nova goes to the barbershop to pick up some tips because she's trying to start a bail fund for some for um some guys who, you know, in jail who can't get no bail money or whatever. She sees that there's no money in there, and she kind of talks to the people in the barbershop about what's going on, in the, you know, with the bail, and, you know, people can't afford to get out of jail because they're poor, and, you know, um, and she invites everybody out to this community event that she's having trying to get money for the bail fund so the owner of the barbershop kind of comes up to her you know and you know you know he give a little you know smile i was like come on little, come on and nova don't know how to act because you know she be dealing with that white pain she ain't had no black pain in a long time so you know nova's like you like she she look a little flustered i was like okay nova okay he could be a love interest for you all right so I'm biased cooking for the um for the fundraiser. And Charlie goes to talk to Micah again and he tells her that he don't want to talk. And so um she cause um Bai is like, you know, he keeps saying he's okay, he not eating nothing, he not really saying nothing, okay? So um yeah, Micah says he's fine, but we all know that Micah is not fine. So Charlie and Nova tell meal loan oh she tar tells nova about the meal loan that and she needs davis to sign through today uh, no she says that the meal loan should come through today excuse me not that she needed because she already signed i'm trying y'all all discombobulated so she tell nova that the, the meal loan should be coming through in a few days and um today is their final mediation for the divorce and so you know they all get upset because she didn't tell nobody but she said she can handle it herself you know and they start talking about Micah not eating and saying everything's okay. How is he dealing with it? And, it, and Charlie is really dismissive of Micah um, when other people question her about it. I'm sure she's concerned about him, but when other people question it, she's like, oh, he'll be okay. You know, he'll adjust. Micah is strong, this and that and the other. And that's going to be an uh, advantage. I'm telling y'all, just like Tyree on Power, you got to pay attention to your kids. Teenagers are sneaky and smart. Okay, it's 2017. You got to keep an eye and ask them what's going on. My child will be aggravated with me because I'll be like, okay, whenever you ready to talk, I'm going to be sitting right here outside the door because I love you. I love you. Mommy loves you. Okay? Maybe I'm just strange. So, Ralph Angel goes to buy the seed for the soybeans that he wants to plant, that he wants to plant in the farm. Um, he goes to get the money from the bank, and the bank person tells him that he needs Charlie's signature to sign to get a loan. He cannot just get the loan by himself anymore. So, Ralph Angel's visibly upset about this. Um, he's very mad because, you know, he wants to be able to move around and do things without having Charlie's approval all the time. And she didn't tell him that she made those changes because you remember last season, he only had to sign and he can get the money that he needed to do what he needed to do when she was in California, okay? So he and Blue go to the diner and he gives Vi, I mean, he acts on Vi to watch Blue while he handles some business. But, you know, Blue spills the tea and says that he has a day with Darla. And Vi says, are you sure about this? And Ralph Angel, like, totally ignores her. And I was like, that's good for you. Ignore her because if you want her, don't be worried about what ain't Vi say. It's your life. And he just says he needs, um, you know, he need her to watch him because he need to take care of some business. Okay, mind your business, on Vi. And then uh, um, Vi says you need to give her some grace, give Charlie some grace because today is the last day of her mediation or whatever. And he like, all right, whatever. So he sees Remy at the diner. He tells Remy about what's going on with the seed situation. And Remy is like, man, your sister tripping. You know, we got a little issue going on too. So um, he tells him, well, why don't you try to get along? And then, you know, obviously, uh, Ralph Angel is like, no, I can't get the loan because I have a felony. He's like, why don't you stop saying what people not going to do? You know, this loan is designed for people just like you, people with no capital, and, you know, and little income. Um, as long as you haven't had a drug conviction, then you should be able to get the loan. So he's like, well, well you know, now it's like, oh, I can do things by myself. So hopefully he'll be able to do these things by himself. Excuse me, y'all. Okay, so... Um, Mediation. So Davis and um, Charlie are in mediation, and Davis asks to speak to Charlie by himself. So when they, when everybody leaves out of the room, he tells her that he wants to have joint custody of Micah. And so obviously Charlie is not with this. Now this is how I feel about it. Yes, David is. Davis is not the best 
you know, person as far as women, but that's his son. Like, I feel like it's nothing wrong. As long as he is a responsible parent and does what he's supposed to do as far as parenting, I don't feel like there's anything wrong with joint custody, especially because Charlie has so much stuff going on. But I think that Charlie is trying to, I don't want to say punish him. I just think that she's so hurt that she doesn't want him to have the comforts of his life or, you know, feel like it's okay for him to do or have done what he has done. So I think she's, she's, really acting out of emotion and anger and really not thinking about her son because everybody need their daddy you know every son needs their father so i don't really agree with her on this one she said she want joint custody i mean he said he want joint custody she's like you were the last thing michael need right now he's like i talked to michael and michael said he he don't have no problem with it so this hurts her very much she runs out of the office she cries she breaks down you know she's very upset because she seems very blindsided by this so later on we see her at the school and she's calling michael like where you at he like she like i'm at your school and he's like you know i'm not at school i guess after school he just left and she's like, um, and he's like, well, what's going on? She's like, what's going on? He's like, I just need some space. You know, I, I, you know, I just need some space. You know, just give me some space. And so he just wandering around the city. Now, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I, I lived in New Orleans. I went to Xavier. I'm from Slidell. All of that. So New Orleans is not a city that you just want to roam around in. Like, that's not the place. Because he was in Treme. 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 You run, you, you don't just wander around. Like, maybe the French Quarter, maybe something like that, but, or Uptown, but not like, Treme is not where you want to be wandering around. New Orleans is not a city where you just wander and you're rich as hell. Like, that's not how life works, but whatever. So, he wandered around the city, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and give you the rest of his storyline. He wanders around until he ends up at the the uh fundraiser that nova is having nova is speaking about you know being poor and black and and bail and that whole racket they got going on getting people keeping people in jail to keep your kids out the system y'all because it ain't nothing but a scam for money okay so and she sees him in the audience and then she you know she rushes to him and she hugs him and she tells him that everything is going to be all right so we'll see that nova is probably going to be his shoulder to lean on a person that he can really talk to throughout this season okay so <clears throat> While this is going on, um, Charlie, you know, when, when Michael told her that she needed, that he needed some space, Charlie broke down in the parking lot. She was, she was like silently crying, but then she just said, okay, but you can tell it just ripped her heart out because she's trying to get close to her son. But Charlie don't realize that you dismissing the important stuff. And then you'll back, double back and be like, well, do you want to talk? But then after that, you'll be like, well, Michael and Strong, the boy got out of jail. You ain't paying no, you ain't just walk by him. Didn't hug him or nothing. So it's like she trying, but is she going about it the wrong way? So, um, yeah, money. Okay, so Nova goes back to the barbershop to get the money for the fun. He says that he got her some more money, and he put some of his money in there, the barbershop guy. So, and then he was like, you know, I really, you know, I can't stop thinking about what done, what happened the other night. And, you know, I can't stop thinking about you. And I'm like, Nova. You done already bounced on the day? Girl, what's happening? Nova just passing the coochie out in the neighborhood, girl. Nova, Nova, Nova could have got some miles on it in the past couple episodes. I'm like, Nova, girl, listen. I know we trying to be, you know, feminist. And you can do what you want to do when you want to do it, girl. But, girl, you know what I'm saying? Be careful with your cootie cat. Be stingy with your cootie cat. Hey, be stingy with your be stingy with your cootie cat, girl. Just a little bit more stingy. I mean, damn, God. You giving it to everybody, but see, no, but she was like, mm -mm. cause you know he was like, you know, you can call me anytime, girl, day or night, okay? Holidays, every day, okay? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, last Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. No, okay, but yeah, you get it. He won't be the D man. He put an application in for the D man position, okay? Y'all get that on the way home. So she like a little shocked back because Nova looking like, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? I've been dealing with the, I don't know. I don't know if I can take that all the time. You know what I'm saying? But that's neither here nor there. So we moving right along. Moving right along. So um, Roberta tells, we're back to the diner. Roberta tells, uh, what's her name? What's her name? Aunt Vi. Roberta tells Aunt Vi that she thinks she heard that the, the ship that Hollywood is on had an explosion. And so, you know, obviously she goes and calls him. He's not answering the phone. So this is very upsetting to her, okay? Now, I don't know when that happened. I might have uh, mixed that up or whatever. But Micah is roaming the city. Like I said, he comes across her. That's what he sees him and rushes towards him. At the same time, Charlie has gone over to Remy's house, okay? 
Oh, hold up. Ralph and Oh, let me let me keep keep, keep it right in order. Ralph and Jen Dollar, they went on a date and Blue had to come because I guess uh um, um, Vi was probably upset about the whole situation. So, Ralph Angel and Darla are on the date. Blue is with them. They're having a cute time, you know. Blue is jumping all over the place. And, you know, she tell him to sit down. And she like, and he like, it's all right. And she like, no, I, it's a certain way I want him to act in public. Thank you, Darla. Sit, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. So, he was like, you know, it's just new for you, Blue. And she, he's like, yeah, it's just new for me. So, later on, the waiter tells the Blue that he should get a G.I. Joe instead of that doll or whatever. And you can tell it offends him. And Ralph Angel steps up. I mean, just checks him right there. You know, now nah, we're going to have this, 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 and this. Okay? And you shut up. And you can tell he was like, the waiter was like, okay, or whatever. And Darla was like, hmm. You know, so at the end of the dinner, he said he's not going to give him a tip. Daughter said, you should give him a little tip. You know, give him a bad tip, but give him a tip. So, um, Ralph Angel confesses and say he don't have enough money because he had just bought a certain money. He wasn't planning on buying an extra dessert for the doll. And he was like, uh... And she was like, look, you know, we know each other. We don't need to do all of this. Like, I know y'all ride or die, okay? Whenever you start making that money on that farm, nigga, we gonna have money. So don't you worry about I'm about to play this tip, baby. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. We gonna ride or die. When you come up, I'm coming up with you, okay? We gonna upgrade together. That's how it's supposed to go. Most of the time, you don't make it that far, okay? But, hey, that's how it's supposed to go. In a perfect world, you're supposed to upgrade with your boo together. Okay, so... Charlie calls her mom. We're going to see her mom this season. I'm sure of it. I'm sure that we will see her mom. She calls her mom. She leaves her a message and basically says we can see that she hasn't talked to her in a while and she just really needs somebody to talk to. So after her mom didn't answer, she shows up at Remy's house. Remy says that this is the anniversary of his wife's death. I thought it was a little strange that he has kind of like an altar to his wife four years after the death. Now, I'm not saying that he shouldn't have anything from his wife, but he got pictures all over the place. He got her stuff up. He has everything. Like, if you would invite him into your house and you got your dead wife stuff all over the place, like, I'd have been like, maybe you need to seek counseling because you're really not over it. So, he apologizes to her for um, trying to rush her into being in a relationship because he says, that, you know, she was the first woman that he really wanted to get to know, but he realizes now that she hasn't really had no time to mourn her relationship, to get over the fact that she was married and, you know, all the hurt and pain she went through with David. So he apologized for that. And he tells a story about it, the last time of him talking to his wife. Now, this is juxtaposed with Micah, you know, wandering through the city, fighting over. And it's also juxtaposed with Vi waiting for the bus, um, the guys are getting off the bus from the rig, and so she's waiting and hoping that Hollywood gets off the bus. I was sitting in my bed, y'all. If you watched me last night, I was like, oh, in Hollywood, all I know is if Hollywood don't get off this bus, it's about to be some consequences and repercussions. All I know is Hollywood better, he bet, and he got off. So Hollywood got off the bus. Praise the Lord, he made it, he made it, he made it. He made it through, okay? So, uh, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Goes to Remy's house. Mm-hmm. Anniversary, boom. Yeah, and that's it. So, he made it. Um, I thought the two first two episodes were very good. They were awesome. Uh, like I said, next week I'm going to try to um, live stream and make sure I don't flip the camera or show the thing. But I have a friend who told me he's going to show me how to do the inlay. But I'm confused because how can you do a video with an inlay? And not get it deleted. But if I flip my camera around to my TV for five seconds, it get deleted. So I don't know what's going on with this. So I'm going to figure out what I'm doing. But for right now, I hope y'all enjoyed this review. I would love to hear your like, your comments, excuse me, your comments, your thoughts. You know, I love it. I love it. All that good stuff. Wait, we back in this thing, okay? So uh, I hope y'all having a great week. I'm going to try to do my videos a little bit earlier. It's summertime, y'all, so I don't be getting out of bed until like 10 o'clock, no shade. And I went to the gym and everything, so it's about 1 o'clock in the afternoon right now when I'm recording this video. So I'm going to try to like put myself on a schedule so y'all won't be waiting all day because I don't watch everybody review mine late as hell, okay? So... I'm going to do better, though. I'm going to do better. So, I'll holler at y'all next week. Peace.